Hello, welcome to module 24 of NPTEL NOC on introduction to point set topology part 2. So, we shall continue the study of stone wire stress theorem. Today, we will take the complex case and then we will also study the extended version namely for locally compact spaces. So, theorem 5.36 is complex stone wire stress. Let x be a compact or star space, a be a closed subalgebra of C x c. So, these complex valid functions continuous x is locally compact and also of which separates points this, is, this should be always there contains a non-zero constant this is an option always but this time we, we are taking only this uh, hypothesis there is one more closed under conjugation is very important. Okay. Now, we are taking the complex case, you have to put an extra condition here, closed under conjugation. Conjugation of what? Conjugation coming from the complex conjugation C. A function taking values in C, okay, you, you know what is the conjugation of that, right? Because you can follow it by conjugation C to C. So, that is f going to f bar. So, if f is there, f bar should be also there, that is the meaning of closed under conjugation. Then this a is the whole of x c. Okay. If you remove this closed under conjugation and take c equal to r, this is the stone wise stress theorem. Okay. Corresponding to the theorem of Gaddy, there is a version here that I will leave it to you as an exercise. Okay. So, we will only concentrate on the main version here. Consider C x r as a sub algebra of C x c over the reals. Okay. This is like a, a real vector subspace of C x r, which is a real Banach subspace. Let us put a underscore r here as a intersection c x r. C x r is a real uh, subalgebra, a is a subalgebra, complex subalgebra, but it is also real subalgebra. So, when you take the intersection, this will be a closed subalgebra of c x r, okay, as an r algebra, r vector space, real vector space. Okay, so, this is a subalgebra, it is a closed subalgebra. Now, something nice happens because A is closed under conjugation. Okay? So, that is what we have to use. If I write an element of C x r as f equal to u plus i v, any complex valued function, not element of C x r, C x c, as a real where we real part and imaginary part, you can always write u plus i v, where u and v are now inside C x r. Okay, they are continuous also, right. Since A is closed under conjugation, u minus i v will be also inside A. Therefore, their sum will be inside A, divided by 2 will be inside A, that is nothing but u. Similarly, i times this will be also inside a when you add the 2 you get i times v divided by 2 will be just divided by 2 i you have to take that will be also v. So, you see that f belongs to a implies real part of f is inside a r right if it is inside a as well as inside c x r is a real now it is a r. Similarly, the imaginary part also inside A because once A is there, I times A is there, uh, uh, F is there, I times F is there, minus I times F is there, you apply that one to, to this condition, the real part of minus I times F is the imaginary part of F. Okay, There are different ways of looking at it. 
So, in conclusion, closed under conjugation implies that for the real part of that, you know, A intersection CXR, this has both the real part and imaginary part of every element inside A will be inside here. Thus, we have shown that F belongs to A implies both real and imaginary parts are inside. Okay, inside A R. Now, given x not equal to y, let f belong to C x C a be such that f x is not equal to f y. As usual, you can write f as u plus i v. Then, f x not equal to f y implies either the real parts are distinct or the imaginary part are distinct. When two complex numbers are different, they can be that the real parts are different or imaginary parts are different. Okay. Now, u and v are inside a r, right. So, a r also separates points, either I can take the imaginary part or if I can take give me a real part or imaginary part. So, a separates points implies a r also separates points, thanks to closed under conjugation, without that we could not have concluded this one. For similar reasons, if c is a non-zero constant, inside A, a non-zero constant could be what? Could be a complex number, one either real part or the imaginary part must be non-zero. So, the same hypothesis will be true for AR also. AR also contains a non-zero constant. This time non-zero constant has to be real. So, so you have to take real part or the imaginary part, whichever is non-zero. Okay, they will be there inside that one. So, all the hypotheses are satisfied by A R, right. Yeah, therefore, by our real part theorem, okay, we conclude that A R must be equal to the whole of C X R. But then, I times I times C of X R will be also inside A, because after all, A R is a sub of uh, this curly A and curly A is a complex vector space. So, I times this will be also inside A. Therefore, C x C which is nothing but real plus imaginary right C x R plus I times C x R both of them are inside A. So, sum is inside A. Therefore, this whole thing is A. Okay. It cannot be bigger than anything cannot be bigger than C x C. So, that is the end of the proof for complex case, all right. Now, let us go to the extensions of this one, the locally compact case. Once again, Alexandrov's one point compactification plays the role and our job will be quite simple when you pass on to the Alexander's compactification and then we can apply these theorems. So, so I have told you I repeat you may state and prove a theorem similar to this 5.35 due to Gaddy in the complex case okay, which we shall leave you as an exercise. We shall now discuss the case when x is locally compact and Hausdorff. As usual, we will now combine both the cases. This k denotes either r or c. Okay. So, take a function f from x to k. We say f vanishes at infinity. This is a phrase I am defining. I am not defining infinity here. Okay, there is no infinity as such but we are defining what is the meaning of f vanishes at infinity. Understand? What is that? If for every epsilon positive, there exists compact subset C of x such that modulus of f x is less than epsilon for all x inside x minus c in the complement of c away from a compact set, 
I should be able to uh, control the value of fx. Modulus of fx is arbitrary small. Whatever epsilon I have chosen, no c can be chosen. C will depend upon epsilon as well as f, of course. Okay, such that away from c, modulus of fx will be less than epsilon. That is the meaning of vanishing at infinity. Just let me give you some examples. If x is compact, of course, every function from x to r vanishes at infinity vacuously. Why? Because I can take c equal to the whole of x and x minus c is empty. So, there is no condition. That is all. On r, okay, look at this function g, g x equal to e power minus x square. Okay. At x equal to 0, this is 1. All right. And then it just tapers down, and as x goes to infinity, this tends to 0. Okay. So, here the model is there. Why we are using this word? As x goes to infinity, the limit, this function tends to 0. So, we have converted that into an arbitrary topological space by this definition here, vanishing at infinity. Outside a compact set, it will become less than epsilon. Given any epsilon, you can choose your compact set such that that condition is old. That is the meaning of this one. Okay, so, this example will motivate the definition here. A constant function on a non-compact space vanishes at infinity if and only if it is a zero function. Take any constant function, take your epsilon to be such that it is less than modulus of that constant. Okay, that is possible if the constant is not zero. Then that condition will not be satisfied at all. Right? So, it will not vanish at infinity. So, it vanishes at infinity only if it is a function, zero function. Okay, this is a strong uh, conclusion here, you see, because we are interested in uh, subspaces having, must be having non-zero constants. If non-zero constants, then this condition will not be satisfied now. So, these two conditions are somewhat, you know, opposite of each other all right so let x be locally compact hausdorff space by the way this definition is there for all spaces now we are only interested in locally compact hausdorff space let x star denote its one point compactification i am i want to specifically say that this is its one point compactification when i am the so, I am referring to Alexandrov's compactification. A continuous function f from x to k is the restriction of a continuous function f hat from x star to k such that f star of a, a f hat of f the star is 0 if and only if f vanishes at infinity. So, the definition of vanishing at infinity has been given a different meaning here. Take a function which vanishes at infinity in a locally compact Hausdorff space. Then you can extend it to a continuous function on the one point compactification by sending the infinity or the star to 0 and conversely. Okay. If you can do that and you can always define f, star, f hat of star equal to 0, but it may not be continuous. After defining this, if it is continuous, then this f must be vanishing at infinity. So, this is just a consequence of the definition of x star, namely what are the open subsets of x star which contain the point 0, point infinity. 
what are the neighborhoods of infinity they are nothing but the complement must be compact and hausdorff of course for compact and close complement must be compact so that is the hypothesis okay so that will automatically give you this one so i have i have not going to explain anything more than that here okay the proof is easy all right so now comes this extra notation we have here let c not of x k denote the space of all continuous functions on x which vanish at infinity okay then c not of x k is a closed subalgebra of the banach algebra of all bounded continuous functions on x when x is locally compact hausdorff space it can also be identified with the maximal ideal m star this notation is now familiar to you m x was what all those which vanish at, at x right so the same thing m star is all those functions which take zero value at the point star which is the infinity you can write it as infinity or you can write it as the star all right so this is also straight forward now so this is like remark i have put it as a lemma so that i can refer to this one again and again that's all now we can state the extended stone wise stress theorem start with any locally compact of of space let a contained inside c not of xk okay be a closed subalgebra which separates points of x and is a closed under conjugation if k is c so this closed under conjugation is not necessary or even if you put it is harmless if k is r okay that is the only case i have to mention these two separately otherwise the proofs are all the same you know together i can handle uh, the case r or c together as soon as k is c you should assume this extra condition that's all then the conclusion is that either a is c not of x k the entire thing or you have one extra point x not inside x now okay such that this a is m x not not i am putting because you should not confuse it with uh, the m x not has a different meaning in uh, c x r c x k okay so this is vanishing at zero at uh, at at x not and also it is vanishing at infinity okay i can i put a star here if we notation but m x not zero i have put fine so these are the zeros of course these are zeros at star and they are zero at an one extra point so the subalgebra can be this one or it should be the whole of it so this is the conclusion of extended stone wise stress theorem so we are not going to study c x r in particular here the whole space we are only going to study those which vanish at infinity okay so that is the key for us so that we can use uh the compactification of x a little bit caution is necessary here before we apply the result for compact case i told you that we want to convert the problem into studying the continuous functions on compact space by going to one point compactification but you have to be a bit cautious here namely consider the case when x itself is compact then c not of x k is nothing but c of x k which we have seen that every point every function now vanishes at infinity that we have seen right hence we can directly apply the result in the compact case okay so 
we don't have to prove this one but we have to consider this one because a locally compact Hausdorff space is also a, 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 a compact Hausdorff space is also a locally compact Hausdorff space that is why we have to check that the statement is correct in that sense that's all we are not proving that so that part is taken care okay therefore we can now come to the case when x is locally compact so i repeat consider the case when x is compact then cx not c not of xk is nothing but c of xk hence we can directly apply that to compact case now come to the case when x is non compact as observed before the only constant function which vanishes at infinity is zero therefore c not of x k does not have any non zero constants in particular the subalgebras of c not of x k also have no non zero constants okay therefore the regular stone wise stress theorem cannot be applied here so you have to take the gaddis version the other part right now as a subalgebra of c x not x star of k a may not separate points of x star so that is also a problem we have assumed that a separates points of x but when you pass to x star and think of this as subalgebra this may fail to separate points also because there is an extra point right so we have to be careful so let us study these things case by case so assume first that a separates points of x star okay remember a is a subalgebra of c not of xk therefore you can think for each f inside here you can put f hat and think of that as a function from x star that's a unique f hat what is f hat f hat of star is going to zero that is the only way you can extend so you can think of a as a subalgebra of uh, of x uh, c x star k we can then apply the standard theorem uh, 535 gaddis version to conclude that a is c x star k or there is a unique point x in x star such that a equal to mx so this is the two uh, uh, two parts are there but a is already in c not of x k which is not the whole of c not of x star of k c of x star of k okay the first possibility is ruled out therefore it is a second possibility but this x cannot be inside x because then a does not separate x and star contradicting the assumption so we say a separates points of x star if there is another point x and star both of them will be zero so that is not possible so this x must be equal to star okay therefore a is nothing but c not of x wonderful all right so this is the same point suppose i a assume a separates points of x star now comes the little more complicated case suppose a does not separate x star then what i what are going to do in passing we note that since a separates points of x the extra assumption that a separates points of x star is the same thing as equivalent to assuming that for every point x in x there must be a function f belong to s such that fx is not equal to 0 okay for each point there is a function fx so this just 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 means that it is not contained in any maximal ideal mx okay that was the assumption if this is not true means equivalently what happens when a does not separate points since a separates points of x 
but does not separate points of x star it just means that now you have to have analyze this one correctly okay this can happen only if there exists a unique point x not x such that a is inside mx not intersection cx not which is mx not zero okay as soon as this condition is satisfied for each point x fx is not equal to zero there is one f it will set is it will it will uh, separate points of x and star okay in addition to separating points within x it will separate points of x star the whole thing so under the assumption that it does not separate x star we have concluded that a is contained inside in this side here okay you have to show that it is equal to this idea so task is not yet over so that is the only choice now it can't be the whole thing it has to be this idea now consider some space y equal to x minus x not throw away x not okay when you throw away x not you have got an open subset that is also locally compact hausdorff so that hypothesis is not yet changed now i have to make some more cases here suppose x not is a is not an isolated point okay let us assume that x not is not an isolated point that is easier case perhaps <laughs> the other one is too easy that's why i am considering it later the inclusion map i from y to x induces an algebra homomorphism of algebras which i write it as i star from cxk to cyk y is a subspace so what is this i compose take take y to x inclusion map and then take the function f from x to k so it is i star okay so it is like restriction map actually but restriction map is injective now this is always there this restriction algebra homomorphism injective map algebra homomorphism always there it is injective because x not is not an isolated point which just means that the subspace y is dense in x okay dense subset if two functions agree they agree on the whole space so this is we are using it again because y is x is hausdorff space therefore this i star of now so we have got an injective mapping now look at the image of mx not okay intersection cx not of xk this map i am restricting it to c not now okay c not is what those things which vanish at infinity right vanish at x star a star is not here but vanishing at infinity makes sense intersect with mx not that means those which vanish at x not also so i star of that is nothing but c not of y k what is meaning of c not of y k again those which vanish at infinity now look at this one that this x had an infinity that is star but this y not this y has two of them this x not which you have thrown away that is also part of infinity now so around the neighborhood of that point okay you can cut off and then whatever is left out you cut off from the other side also you get a compact set so you can think of this also being now part of infinity now okay this point which you have thrown out so this is important to see this is nothing but now c not of yk okay without referring to anything any uh, extraneous uh, points and so on what is this one this is just all continuous functions okay which vanish at infinity in our definition now consider the one point complexification y star of x 
y star of the formula of y so since x not is the unique point such that a is contained inside m x not okay it follows that a separates points of y star okay its uniqueness was important uh, now you see a did not separate points of this x star okay that was the starting assumption but after throwing away x not and bringing that in 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 the sense to along with a star so that the the bad point has been brought back together with the uh, infinity and that is the whole idea here okay now now what happens is x not is a unique point was the unique point in a inside m x not it follows that this a now separates points of y star okay therefore we can conclude from case 1 that a must be c not of y k which is by we have defined is image of this one i am just writing mx not intersection this is there because i star is injective mapping which is mx not x not zero all right so that is the end of one case what is the sub case sub case is then x not is an isolated not an isolated point of it now we come to the case wherein x not is an isolated point of x here you don't need much uh, topology it's just algebra now okay when x not is an isolated point how does c x k look like at the point the isolated point you are free to define the function whichever way you like so that is a free point so it can be assigned free real, free real or complex number any number in k therefore what happens is c x r c x k is nothing but c y k where y is the complement of of this point x not is thrown out right cross with k this this second factor corresponds to arbitrary values taken at the point x not okay that is what uh, cxk is with what is this product structure i want to tell you namely take the inclusion map i from y to x which we have taken earlier with i star being the first projection now the the restriction map from here to here becomes the first projection the second projection is evaluation of the function at the point x not that's the second projection so if i know what are two projection maps here i know the product structure in other words every function here can be written as i star of that function comma f evaluated at x not that expression will be unique therefore c not of x k is nothing but c not of y k cross k okay k has to be free c vanishing at infinity is not affected with this k at all here see <laughs> right because whenever you take compact set you can include uh, the single point inside that compact set away from that compact set vanishing is same thing as vanishing at this part okay so c not of x k is c not of y k cross k and m x not the ideal is nothing but c y of k because this k factor will go away okay things which vanish then k factor will go away therefore we are in the situation wherein a is contained inside c not of y k and separates points of y star namely case 1 okay so sub case b which is reduced to case 1 therefore we conclude that this a is nothing but 
C naught of Y K, which is M X naught X naught. This was case one, if you should recall here. Okay. So this completes the proof that uh, the theorem that uh, for locally compact spaces, how does a closed subalgebra look like? Locally compact top stop spaces take a closed subalgebra of the set of uh, of the algebra of all functions which vanish at infinity. For that, we have this. This is one extension. I don't say this is the only extension. There can be many other possibilities here. This is one of the popular things. You can also have a look at uh, uh, Simmons' book for uh, such versions. Okay. So thank you. Maybe I will let you know a few of the exercises here before closing up. Okay. They are not directly related to this one, but. Uh, since we are studying function spaces, I think these are relevant. You prove that continuous functions on A B, this Banach algebra is separable. Separable Banach algebras are, are more I mean, rarer and they are very important. Let F belong to C01. Instead of A B, I put 0, 01 just for writing down. It is actually applicable to C A B also. Put M N of F as F X multiply by X N and integrate. So, this is a weight function. So, call that as M N okay, for n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n. With one function, you have put several uh, these functions or M N of F are these uh, constants here put m f equal to the sequence m naught f, m 1 f, m 2 f and so on. Okay. So, this is, the, this is the definition. So, I have taken f and then I have produced a sequence here into what? Into the sequence whatever. So, this r cross r cross r show that this map m is injective on c 0 1. What does it mean? One of these, if f and g are different, at least one of them, m n for some n, will be different. That is what we have to prove. Now, this is this exercise is directly related to the Stone Weierstrass theorem. Prove the following n variable version of Weierstrass approximation theorem. Weierstrass approximation theorem was only for in the interval, closed interval to R, right? Now you have to prove it for n variables. What is that? I have given the version also here. Any continuous real world function on a closed rectangular box inside Rn can be approximated by a polynomial in n variables. Okay deduce from this that any continuous real valued function on a closed and bounded subset of R n instead of the box can be uniformly approximated by polynomial functions. Okay. Here also you can put the uniformly approximated. Show that any real valued or complex valued function can be uniformly approximated by a polynomial in a complex variable z and z bar. A polynomial in z and z bar is different from just polynomial z and taking uh, some conjugation. Okay. For example, x can be written as z plus z bar by 2. Right, so that is the whole idea here. Contrast is with the fact that from complex analysis, the following fact is there. If you don't know that, you may learn it somewhere. Namely, look at the simple function f z equal to one by z. This function cannot be approximated uniformly 
on the unit circle by a polynomial insert unit circle is closed and compact only the unit circle you take okay don't take the whole disk whole disk doesn't make sense because one by the disk not defined on the whole disk at zero it is not defined okay try to find a sequence of uniformly a sequence of polynomials is converged it is not possible okay but why can't we exp uh, why it should be true i mean because why can't we apply stone wise stress theorem for complex case to uh, to to this function after all this is a nice function defined on c minus 0 right and then i'm taking a compact subset there the circle so what is wrong so you have to explain that okay don't make this mistake that uh, weierstrass theorem can be applied here okay not weierstrass theorem stone weierstrass theorem why just tell me why this is one there is one line okay that is this exercise there are some more exercises these exercises are will be there in the in the in the pdf file i am going to give you anyway okay so you don't have to depend upon the slide but i would like to show it in the slide that's all all right thanks so let us uh, meet next time with a new topic.